Hi everybody, welcome to Pomeroy Creative. This is Josh, and welcome to a new video series on using Google Drawings. This video course is going to kind of take you from the very beginning if you've never used Google Drawings before, and hopefully help you try to create something like this. These are just some of the things that you could create using Google Drawings. Now, to find or access Google Drawings, you need a Google or Gmail account, and then you go to Google Drive. Google Drive is where all of the Google web applications live. It's almost like its own virtual computer with a file management system. You can store any format of file as well as create new files, documents, spreadsheets, presentations, and drawings. Now, I want to clarify something about drawings. It has the name drawings, but it's much more like Microsoft Publisher. We're doing sort of desktop publishing type of drawings rather than sketching with pen or pencil. That actually doesn't happen in this program. This is more about using shapes and photos and text to create something very unique and beautiful, hopefully. So there's a couple ways that I can access this application. Right now I'm looking at my Google Drive folder and you can see here, these are all folders. It just puts them into these little blocks right here and inside there I've got many more files. I can go over here and click this red new button and that will drop down and give me some options to create a new document. And if I go to more under here, I've got a Google Drawings. I can click it there. I could also click it sort of just in this gray desktop sort of area over here, right click, new file, Google Drawing. This will open a new tab, and in this new tab, we have the entire application. This runs in any web browser, but I highly recommend Google Chrome because there's some benefits in using Google Chrome with Google's apps, as well as it's just an, a great, lightweight, fast web browser that I would recommend, even just for browsing the internet. So here's what you get when you create a, a brand new Google Drawings document. There's this uh, canvas area right here in the middle, and this little checkered pattern just indicates that it's a transparent background. There's no background, there's no color, there's no picture, it's just transparent. And so if I exported something from this right now, it would be transparent. Unless it was a JPEG, then that automatically defaults to white. The first thing that I like to do is give it a name and then set up the document dimensions for whatever I'm trying to make. So in this demonstration, let's create a poster. I'm gonna go up here to this untitled drawing text right here, and you get this popover that says rename. I click that, and I get a little dialog where I can name this. And for this demo, I'm just gonna say poster. You can name it whatever you like. Click OK. That way you don't have a whole bunch of untitled drawings sitting in your Google Drive folder. The next thing I'm gonna do is go over to this file menu right here. Drop this down and go down here to Page Setup. It's the third from the bottom, right above the Print uh, options here, Page Setup. And I do this first because, I want to explain this clearly, if you have artwork in here already, whether it's uh, word art or pictures or shapes, and then you go to resize your page, it will try to skew or stretch that, that artwork as best it can to sort of reformat to the new size. And most of the time, that's not the desired effect that you want. A way around that is just to select everything that you have on the canvas, hit Commander or Control X, that will cut it to the clipboard. Then you can change your page settings and then Commander Control V will paste everything back in and then you'll probably have to do some readjusting now to your new layout. But this is why I set up the page first. So here we have standard 4x3. This is what they always start with by default in a Google Drawing. We have some widescreen here, some uh, quick selections, or we can just do custom. That's what we're going to do. Most of the time, you're probably going to want to choose custom. We can choose inches, centimeters, points, or pixels. We're going to keep it on inches. We're going to make the width 11. We're going to do a tabloid size, 11 by 17. So put those dimensions in and click OK, and it will straight away reformat our document to those dimensions. Now, we still have this checkered pattern in here, so let's go ahead and change that to a color. To do that, we can just right-click anywhere on the canvas or over here in this gray desktop area, and let's just make it blue. You can choose whatever color you want, but this just gives us a color background to work on, and that can be done at any time. You can change the color of that background anytime you want. 
with a simple right click, you get a context menu, change the color in there. Now let's add something to this. Our insert menu is our friend. Let's go to insert and choose word art. Word art is very interesting. It's different than your text boxes. Text boxes sort of flow like you would expect a text document to work. Or word art works more like a shape once it's inserted. So let's just put in some sort of name here. I guess we'll just call it this poster. Now we get a very generic Arial font with a black outline and a light blue fill. You can move these around anywhere you want just by clicking and dragging this. That's the nice thing about word art. You can resize it and holding shift will maintain your proportions. I never like to stretch text, so I use shift a lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna take off the stroke just by clicking this little pencil and saying transparent and then the paint bucket, I wanna make it white text. Okay, now if I start dragging it over, I start to see these little guidelines. I get one when I hit an edge, there's a little red guideline. I get one when I hit the center, there's a red guideline. I get one when I hit this other edge, red guideline. So I want it in the center. Now if I want to put it in the center vertically, I can just drag it down until I get two guidelines going right through the middle. That lets me know I'm right in the middle. I want to make this a little smaller, so I'm just going to click it and then drag a corner in, holding shift, and if I hold option, it will drag it, or it will resize it on both sides the same way, just like that. That's pretty good, but I want to change a font. So if I just click it, and then up here I see Arial. Here's a whole bunch of fonts that I have. If you go to more fonts, this pulls from the Google's font web font library, and just by clicking any of these fonts will add to your list of fonts. There are tons and tons of fonts in here, which is really great. So for now, I'm just gonna choose one that I've already added called Six Caps. I'm gonna try to create some sort of movie poster, I think. All right, now I wanna resize it and maybe put it up here. And let's drag this down. Now, if you hold Option or the Alt key on your keyboard while you drag something, it will drag a duplicate. Another way to do this is just Command D that creates a duplicate and you can drag it somewhere. I like using this little gray area over here that's off the canvas <clears throat> to do a lot of editing and then drag things into the document to position it. So if I double click the word art, it pops up the dialog where I can change that text. Let's say movie. This is going to be a movie poster. I can line these up. Now this top one I could make a little bit bigger and I get these great guides again. Let's change this background so you can see these really nice and clear. Let's make it black. All right, let me do that again. So when I get guidelines that are blue, it lets me know that that's the same width or height as something else, which is a great way of, of lining up your document, making it look really nice and professional. So those are now the same width, which is a really cool little trick. And I can just put those right in the center if I want. But I know I'm gonna want some text down here or something down at the bottom. So I'm just gonna move those back up, maybe make them a little smaller. And I can do that while having both of them selected. I can also put them into a group with Command or Control G. Boom. Now when I move them, they will move together, just like that. I use the grouping feature a lot in Google Drawings. All right. Next thing we could do is maybe insert a shape. Let's do that. We can put in a shape, just a simple shape here, maybe a circle. And if you click, you'll get and drag, you'll get an, an ellipse. You'll start to get an oval. If you want to keep it a circle, again, shift is our friend. That'll constrain the proportions to make a perfect circle. And just like any shape, we can change the stroke, which is the pencil, make that transparent, and the fill, which is the paint bucket. Let's make that white. We also get these great guides when, let me ungroup this, which is command shift G or control shift G. We get guides that show us position in relation to one another or, or distribution. 
So you see these, these, these small little guides here. When I line something up, that lets me know that these are all equidistant from each other. Okay, sort of an old school, uh, minimalistic movie poster looking here. Maybe James Bond or something. All right, maybe we can put just another circle in here, just just for fun. We'll use this donut shape. This is a really cool shape. We'll turn off the stroke and this time we'll make it black. We can position that. Again, we look at our guides, it snaps nicely for us. And these smart shapes here give us these little yellow or orange diamonds that we can adjust to do all sorts of fun things. So this donut shape can do a whole lot of things for us. We can have a, a thin stroke like that, or we can have a thick sort of target symbol now. Let's make it thin, just like that. Maybe make it a little bigger. Okay, so this is a great start to something that we could we could really make very interesting. We've got a lot more shapes that we can play with. There's arrows, there's call outs. Maybe we'll put a star in here. We can choose a star, click and drag, hold shift. That'll keep our proportions right. And again, this is a smart shape so we can, we can change the, the angle of these points. Let's turn off the stroke, make this a black star, just like that. Change the size of it, something like that. And just line it up right where we want it. Maybe we'll make the star a different color. We can do that by having it selected, going to our paint bucket tool, and then just choosing another color. If you want a custom color, go to the paint bucket tool, and here's custom. This will open a little paint mixer or color mixer that you can choose and really tweak your own color. You can also, if you know the hexadecimal code, just type it right in here or paste it in from another website. So there we have a very minimalistic, but fun looking movie poster. It's 11 by 17 document, and we could go to file, download as, we could download that as a PDF that would hold all of our um, shapes and text in vector data so that we could print at a high resolution. We could also do this with SVG or scalable vector graphic. If we wanted an image of this, we could download as a PNG or a JPEG. I would only recommend downloading it as a JPEG if you want to use it on like a social media website like Facebook because this does compress it quite a bit to make a very small file size. PNG will give you a better quality though. So that's it for this first video of this series on using Google Drawings. I hope you've learned a lot. We're gonna get way more in depth in videos to come, so stick around, hit the subscribe button, and you'll get notified when new videos are available. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you in the next video.